Steven, I've got the weight of the world of supporting You Can't Disappoint a Podcast on my shoulders, and I thought maybe, just maybe, to lighten the load on my back, we could give our fellow listeners and enjoyers of You Can't Disappoint a Podcast some ways to help us out. What do you think? Well, I'm not normally in the habit of lightening the load on your back, (laughs) but, you know, if people want to help us, they sure can. How can they do that, Zach? The first way is to support us on Patreon. If you like what we do here and want to help us take it further and get all kinds of extra content, give us money at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. If you don't want to bear the brunt of our debt, you can appreciate the fruit that we bear to you by going and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Yelp, Google Chrome podcast (laughs) reviewer or whatever you can. And that's going to help us get seen. And the more people see us, the more that we want to be seen and the more that we see you. You can also hang out with us on social media every week over on Facebook, Instagram at Can't Disappoint Podcast, and Twitter at You Can't Disappod. Also, go ahead and give a subscribe and thumbs up to our YouTube channel where we also post the podcast every week. If you want to hold our hands as we walk down this community memory lane, you should shoot us an email over at Can't Disappoint Podcast at gmail.com. You can send us your MVP, your favorite funniest moment, and trivia for the episode we're about to record, and we'll read it live on the air. Yeah, we don't do the show live, but nice try, buddy. (laughs) Thanks for supporting us, and let's get into this week's podcast. Care for some authentic bloopers? This stuff's the real deal. We got it down in Little Munich. It's been bad. Look out! That Blutwurst was probably injected with a laxative to make us pull a Greta Weitz in our trousers. I promise you, there's nothing gross in this sausage. It's just pig's blood stuffed into a cow's intestine. God said must be nearly 100 Luftballons! <laughs> Steven, we just finished doing our pre-show that we do every week before we record, and someone said that I'm way nicer to you on the pre-show than I am in the podcast, and I kind of want to self-absorb and reflect on this. Am I, like, egregiously mean to you here? Not egregiously. But kind of? I wouldn't say that you're mean. But that's, that, yeah, you would, though. (laughs) <laughs> I think because... you've been making a conscious effort to be nice. Like, you you decided, yeah. remember? You were like, I'm going to be nice to Steven, intentionally so. I don't know what it is, but I think I when we're recording, I just have have this, like, I don't know. I don't know why I, why I fall into that. This just kind of like, well, f*** you. I don't know. I don't know you why know, I You know, once that. that red light comes on, Zach, you truly turn into a star in every <laughs> sense of the word. So I think, you know, it's okay. And I'm still waiting on that f- Perrier, Stephen. <laughs> Sorry, the Uber Eats guy no should be there. Any orange minute. peel rubbed along the glass before you let it pour. I swear to God. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't want people to think I'm mean to you. I, I hope, if anything, people realize that it's just kind of like how we joke around with each other, sort of. Because maybe I do it more on the podcast, but you certainly do it too. Maybe. Sure. What? Go no, for. no. Speak for yourself. You know, Zach, I think maybe you have this vision of me where I'm just this ironclad, strong, strong daddy man. You know, I know that's how you see me okay. in, your, in your eyes. Sure. But I'm really just a soft little girl covered in a little blankie, you know, and sometimes it gets windy out there and I just need you to come snuggle up next to me and cover me up. Is that an abstract way of you saying that I've hurt your feelings? No, Zach. I, <laughs> I I'm I'm feeding the the machine right now. I, well, anyway, write us in. Tell us uh, hashtag am or amant I a dick to <laughs> Steven on Thursdays around one p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Welcome to the this show, week. everyone. Welcome. To you can't disappoint a podcast, everybody. Hi, I'm Zach, and I'm like a less funny Hans Rickles. Nice. Hi, I'm Steven, and fight a laser. What was that? Today. Slow it down and bring it down a few notches for me so I can comprehend what you said. <laughs> Fire the laser! Thank you. Welcome to You Can't Disappoint a Podcast, everybody. I hope you're having a lovely day. We sure are glad to be back because we're continuing to sail along the shores of season four. And man, what a season of discussions we've had so far. These have been the four or the three longest episodes we've done in a long time so far. Wow. And. 
I struggle to see that happening today. <laughs> yeah. But who knows? I wouldn't have thought we'd talk about Inspector Space Time that long either. And, and, and we, we truly did. We, we sure did. I enjoyed did. that discussion. That was fun. We got a shout out at the top of the program. Our $10 and up patrons over at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. Those people are Danny M. Lugo, Mary Baker Budisa, Brian Thurman, Taylor Ace, and Plains Walker Prez. President so thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. And Patreon is a place to go if you want to help us drive the show forward and if you want to get a little bit more of us on a weekly basis. Sometimes a lot more. It just depends. Uh, the pre-show was fun today. Steven, let's just... Well, okay, before we do any segueing, we've got to shout out our community papa over at Communities on Twitter. Communities has pushed this podcast and the community fandom so far over the last couple of years, and they've been trucking along since when Community was still airing, so it's that it's really a Twitter account that's a treasure trove of community facts and, and blasts from the past and, and a way to be updated on anything new happening. And it's also our, our dad. Yeah. The man who's <laughs> up to make us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to cut that. You I feel like, like there's one. an extra step in there somewhere. <laughs> no, 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 well, he... Here's what I'm going to say. We're back in the podcast <laughs> right now. You just bleep that out. So I'm going to bleep it out. It and is. here's what I'm going to say. What we just said for our community shout out just now was something uh, truly beyond the pale farther than we've ever gone. And here's what I'm going to do. We're going to post it at the end of the show after the music <laughs> plays out, and we'll let it speak for itself. It was pretty oh, bad. God. I just want to give a disclaimer up here, mostly to Matt from Communities, <laughs> that I think it was funny enough to put at the end of the podcast, <laughs> but this might be one you don't want to play for your kid. <laughs> I think he's never going to listen to the show again. <laughs> With that being said, let's move on to a segue. Uh, we had a really good time on the pre-show today because we talked about some pretty exciting weekends that you and I both had. Yeah. Uh, Steven just got back from competing in Washington, D.C., uh, you danced yeah, for the president Yeah, I didn't win the himself. election, but... Uh... <laughs> you found out you were just a little late on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, or early I... for next time. Yeah, I tried to, like, run into the Capitol and, like, talk to somebody about it. They have yeah. really beefed up security. Yeah. 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 And something about the pelt you were wearing, I think, <laughs> added a little extra attention. Yeah, they, they said, not again. And I was like, what? So how was your competition? Did you have fun? Did you it was Danny great. It was well? so much fun. It was great dancing with Danny. She got to wear this uh, beautiful, like, green dress that nobody had worn yet, so that was cool. Thanks for sending uh, me the pictures of you in it, though. That was really nice. You're welcome. I uh, <laughs> More 18 and up set available on my Patreon. Yeah. Uh, not on the shows. That's Steven's. You gotta find yeah. it. Yeah, you gotta look. Uh, it's not that hard, but it is. Um Ugh. It was great. My mom got to come and watch, which was awesome. It's always great that she can, like, do that. Uh, shout out to my mom, because she's literally, like, she was at, like, almost every band concert, all my, like, comps she can go to, so I'm happy Very that supportive. she's, you know, supporting me. Yeah, which was great. And it's cool that it's led to a thing where you're doing something a little more high level, and she yeah. also gets to, like, go to cool places like Washington, D.C. to keep totally. supporting you. So it's cool. Shout yeah. out to Mary Baker Budisa, only because of the money that she gives to the show. <laughs> That's all. I Not really because care about. she she brought me into this. No, world. no, because this would be here with or without Steven, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we need to have your mom back on the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we should do it during season four, or if we should wait for a for a stronger entry. But we need to have her back on. We certainly do. Well, I had a really fun weekend because I took a really sporadic. Uh, well, Zach, what'd you do this weekend? Let's. <laughs> Zach had an exciting weekend as well. Zach, tell yeah. people about it. I drove to Philadelphia from Indiana, never having driven out that way before. Uh, I decided the day before I was going that I was going to see two nights of concerts of my favorite band of all time, Ween. It was two really the great Wiggles. shows. They were home uh, town shows, so those were really cool. It was my first time seeing them, so it was a, a cool way to see them for the first time. And it, we spontaneously drove to Philly like 11 hours the day of the first show. So we like parked, went to the venue, and watched the show. It was a lot of fun, really spontaneous, but a lot of a lot of cool adventures were had. And it's got me feeling really recharged. I genuinely, during moments of the concert, not aided by any type of substance, I could genuinely feel like all the negativity leave my body. Wow. I could just feel myself, like, restore. 
So I, I'm still feeling that. I'm still feeling very restored. I'm so happy. That's like such a crazy set of events that led you to go there. If you want to hear the whole story, we talked about it on the pre-show. pre-show. It's interesting. It was fun. I was glad to talk about it. That's great. That's really cool. I'm really happy you got to see them. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing them in Chicago with you. Yeah, they're coming to Chicago. I'm for sure going, and I will definitely be trying to drag Steven and whoever else agrees out that way with me. So let's move on to what we're here to talk about, though. Nobody gives a shit about the things that we do. It's true. They're here to talk about community with us. We're talking about season four, episode four of Community. It's Alternative History of the German Invasion. The episode was directed by Stephen. I do not know how to say his last name. It's like Baker. Suchita. Stephen Suchita is what I'm going to say. He previously directed just one other episode, and this is his last credit. He directed Origins of Vampire Mythology last season. That oh, was the, the, the Blade, Blade episode. episode, Chang and Pierce being friends at a at a fair mm-hmm. episode. And this episode was written by Ben Wexler. Uh, I didn't have the time to look up his other credits on other shows, but this is the only episode of Community he wrote. Okay. This is the only one. The episode originally aired on February 28th, 2013. And wow, almost a leap day. Just a and year and a day off. <laughs> Steve, let's dive right into what we learned from the episode this week with our trivia. I've got trivia. four questions for you. I have four for you as and well. And today's flavor of Act Trivia is, of course, sauerkraut. Ooh. It's best served Adam. microwaved. Ooh, you think so? I think it's best warm. I like my sauerkraut scolding hot. Like, I don't want to be able to feel my tongue after I put it in there. I'm going to give you a question first. Gross. What is the final of History of Ice Cream? Oh, it's, um... I, I took note of this. It was also one of my questions. Clearly you didn't. Oh, but, I, but you I don't, don't remember know what it? it was. Uh-uh. Do you not have your questions in front of you? I do, it was almost one of my questions. Oh, it was a Sunday bar. A Sunday bar. I yeah. wanted to say like an ice cream buffet, but that, that would have been that the would not stupidest be thing anyone had ever said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe uh, what time does here. the clock say in oh the second <laughs> in, in the in the backup study room, the first place they go? No. Uh, well, I guess it'd be really early because they keep trying to get their study room early. It was like six. Ah, uh, twelve twenty-two. <laughs> get. <f-ed. laughs> that was such a bullshit question. <laughs> What color was the suede on Britta's <laughs> shoes at timestamp 427? <laughs> uh, my next In question. In frame 4,123 out of 6,169, what was, yeah. Matt from at Communities would be like, stop throwing easy softballs. <laughs> Give me some hard ones. Okay, what were the school board guys offered that got them to let Chang back into the school? It's kind of a trick question. Mm-hmm. It's great publicity to have uh, rehab to fix him. Money. Money. <laughs> they were given money. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what is Reinhold's brother's name? Well, Reinhold's the one from this time, right? Was mm-hmm. it Jurgen? Yeah, I'll take Jurgen. Well, what was it then? Jurgen is how it's pronounced. Oh. In, in German. How many hours of memory does Chang have when he learns he should be in jail? He says it out loud. 49. You're drawing blanks this time. No, 96. Ah. You're drawing all kinds of blanks. Yeah. When is the history test happening? Well, now that I've called you out and talked shit, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's happening on Monday. That's when it was supposed to happen. Cool. Yeah. My last question, where did they get the bratwurst that's been banned by the FDA? Ooh, Little Munich. Good job. Nice. Got Do you one. have any more questions? Why is the German's usual study spot closed? Der Kaffeehausen? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Ah, it's closed for the that filming of an, it that. For, uh, of an esoteric uh, For like an indie film. film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're off to a great start. What a, what a rapid fire <laughs> episode this one was. But before Woo! we give away what we thought of it, let's move on to the emails that we were sent this week. Uh, by other people who would like to discuss this with us. Okay, the first one I'm going to read is from our dad, Hi, Matt. Yeah. Hopefully you're watching this in order and you didn't fast forward to no. the end. And hopefully uh, you never do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he says, hi guys, good luck. Fair enough. Mm. No, sorry. 
When you can't get Nick Kroll back, this is where things go. Everyone's good and capable, but they've forgotten they just saved the school in Chang Dynasty. Other people can paint those other rooms. Does the group have to do everything? Well, I mean, Greendale's never really had the money to pay people for labor, so could anybody else do it? (laughs) Right. Uh, Still, it has funny moments and the flashbacks are golden. But yeah, have a good one, guys. Communities, Matt, not your dad, and I will prove it with zero amount of gifts for Christmas you get from me this year. What flashbacks were golden? What flashbacks were golden? There's a flashback? What flashbacks were golden, Steven? Tell me. I don't know. I don't remember flat golden flashbacks. <laughs> I, I was trying to think, too, and I was like, I don't know a single flashback. Yeah, that happens. I guess we'll see. I guess. Um, and he says that he'll prove that he's not our dad by not giving us Christmas gifts. Joke's on you. I haven't gotten a Christmas yeah. gift from my dad ever. Yeah. I mean, my mom sure does write from mom and dad on every present I've ever received. <laughs> but come on. Yeah. He picked out High School Musical 3 senior year on Blu-ray for me this year? I don't think so. (laughs) He listens, Zach. Um, Trivia. This one is cruel, but this episode contains one of the few actors who has been on Arrested Development, The Office, and Community. Which one is it? Is it the main German guy? Was that James Vanderbeek? It was not James Vanderbeek, I can tell you that. Who was it? I don't know. Oh. Okay. Um, Two, how did Abed know Carl? They played the video say game that, together. Say, oh, I didn't even... I heard you go, to the have heard I heard no Carl. I said it in German. How, how did Abed know Carl? Oh, from a video game. Yeah. He was like Dr. Blitz or something like that. <laughs> he was Space Timer and some numbers. Zero, were like their screen names. eight, two, three or something. Yeah. Eight, three, two. Where did the gang get the blute worst? Um, from Little Munich. That was yeah. all my questions. All right, the answer is number one, Chris Diamantopoulos. That's who that is. That's the guy who, in the last season of The Office, is the cameraman that oh. Pam wants to f- You mean it wasn't really a cameraman? <laughs> <laughs> Posers. Second one from a video game, and yep. then three, Little Munich. So we nailed that one. Nice. Nailed. Nailed. We just nailed our papa. All right. The next one subject line says, I like the way your podcast cradles mine canadles. I like the sound of that a lot. I do too. It's from our good friend Taylor Tim Tom Tambo. What's up? Hi, Steven. Hello, Zach. Oh. I'm all caught up on your pods. Wow. That's a, that's a continuing thing. He did that last week, didn't he? And it was because of a respect dynamic. Mm-hmm. You remember that? I we like discussed it. that. Yeah. That good I, for I get him. a hello. He really knows how to, how to grease our wheels, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, sure. I don't like this episode much. I hate the Changnesia arc most out of all of Chang's stories. Sure. So, in fact, this starts a string of episodes that are all pretty bad, with the slight exception of intro to felt surrogacy and heroic origins. Anyway, I, I we'll kinda get to like, those. No, what? You just skipped over like a lot of the good ones by saying that. I feel like he just skipped over her story of dance. dance. Yeah. Uh, next week's is a minor highlight. And I think he might have even skipped over Basic Human Anatomy, the Troy and Abbott Switch Bodies episode that was written wow. by Jim Rash. Wow. Heavy okay. hands there. Okay, Tim Tam. Uh, funniest moments. Chevy Watch. Most of Pierce's lines, minus the Hitler bit, were chuckle funny this week. Yeah, he still feels a little dejected from it, but mm-hmm. it was close to right. It was pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Um, Abed's slow-mo chair fall was great. Mm-hmm. Hogan's villains is so overlooked but hilarious to me. Trivia. What was Jeff dressed as when trying to prove a point in the study room, and who did he refuse access to? He was a figure skater. And, and it was to... Vicky. Was it to Vicky? I remember mm-hmm. he was a figure skater, and he had, like, makeup on his eyes and stuff, yeah. and he was holding his, his skates. Mm-hmm. It was Vicky. And then MVP, is there one? Maybe Britta's Durndal? Uh, Troy had a good showing, so I guess it's him. Fair. Yeah, it was hard to pick an MVP, but I feel good in who I saddled with. Mm. Um, what do I do now? What do I listen to? Why did I do this to myself? No idea. See you guys next week for Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, and the answer was Ice Skater and Vicky. I'll tell you what to do there, Taylor. Hopping over to you can't disappoint a podcast at dot com oh slash god. Patreon. Oh my god, that hurt me. Yeah, go ahead and pop on over there, and there's tons of stuff. I think there's literally 
over 24 hours of stuff that you can only get over there. Yeah, so check it all out. We've done some wow. specials, some, uh, <laughs> some reviews specials. of different things. We did, we did a great episode on that episode of Scrubs. Yeah. Yeah, I cried. Because of me berating you on it. Yeah, because Zach was bullying me, telling me I'll Patreon never be as successful as Donald Faison. And <laughs> it really got to me. <laughs> you, you're no Faison. You're not <laughs> shit. <laughs> Is that all the emails? Are we done? Uh, yeah. All right, everybody. It's time to move Just, on to my favorite, over. your favorite, Tim Tam's favorite section of the show. We're going to find out as a as a, as a a nation, whatever. Did Steven watch the episode Did this Steven week, watch mother- the episode this week, mother- Steven, you will have 20 seconds on the clock to tell us everything that happened on this week's stuffed episode. Uh, stuffed like a like a cow's intestine. Nice. Uh, with pig's blood. Nice. Alternative history of the German invasion. Steven, how are you feeling? You didn't do well on trivia this week. I have not done well this season yet on trivia. I think no. my best showing was a B minus, maybe. You mean on on not on trivia, on on this. You missed On on this, sir. my best showing is a B minus. My yeah. my trivia is normally my pipes are you're, primo. You're, sometimes champ. you're better at me than trivia, sure. Mm-hmm. But how do you feel right now? Do you think you've got this one on lock, or do you think it's going to add um, to the negative? I, I think I'm grades. either going to get like a strong B plus, okay. or I'm going to like really bomb it. Okay, well let's see if you biff it. I might get I'm hung up count somewhere down. I shouldn't be. Three, two, two, one, go. Um, they're upset because they can't take history of ice cream, so they go to their actual history class, and they have to um, be the villains in history. And then the Germans are there, but not Nick Kroll. Um, and then the Germans take over the study room by signing up for it legally. Then everyone else gets mad at the study group because then they get the Germans kicked out by hosting a German fest, and you can't celebrate your own nationality there. And Chang's back against Changnesia. Um, and then the whole school hates the Greendale because they kicked... Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I feel like all you needed really was a button on the end. Yeah. But you got more of the end than what you have been lately. So I do think... I think you'll get that B+. Plus. Oh, thanks, Zachy. Sure, I think you'll get that B+. Plus. It's not an enthusiastic B+, plus, but it was better than a B. Yeah. You See, got a Tim lot of Tam, it. Zach is nice to me here, too. Get f- Steven. I said that like 30 <laughs> seconds into the show. I don't know. What now? What do we do now? Let's talk about... Oh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of festive conversation on this one. What are the best, funniest moments from this week's riot of an episode? Uh, um, it was hard for me to pick any. This episode isn't anything. Yeah, I liked the... I thought it was funny when they like were in the chairs that broke and they one by one all fell. Yeah, I wrote that like, one down. That was kind of funny, but also kind of weird. Troy had a line that I liked at one point that made me laugh. That you don't remember. Yeah. I wrote, also wrote down... Uh, well, look, that must be nearly 100 luft balloons. Yeah, and then in the background, you see him like motorboating <laughs> the balloons. That yeah, I like that. Made me half smile. Mm-hmm. It's it's continuing that string of season four has not been that funny. There are things mm-hmm. I have liked about these season four episodes, but they have not been as funny as even the worst episodes of seasons one through three. I think it's true. And with that, what did you think about this week's episode? I remembered so little about this going into it. I did not remember it fondly. It almost made me excited to revisit it because I remembered so little. And uh, so far, like with last week, the space-time convention, I remembered Mm -hmm. it badly. And then I enjoyed parts of it. Yeah. Uh, So what did you think going into this week? I didn't enjoy this one very much. I, at one point, I also didn't remember a ton about it. Like when the whole school is in there like boycotting the study group i forgot this was that same episode i and i don't barely, know yeah nothing I don't really know. happens uh-uh i think the whole part of the study group like cleaning up the school was stupid tacked and on had no ending. emotional and like, then the resonance. germans all but like go away at the end yeah they just weren't around anymore i've kind of thrown this around on twitter and to you i think that this is the least essential episode of community we've covered so far i don't know if i'd exactly say it's my least favorite no but this is just so nothing there's nothing Nothing. funny about it there's nothing original about it there's nothing memorable about it and there's nothing overly offensive about it either it's just an episode that makes me feel 
for the first time ever, really, in the show, nothing. I don't feel yeah. shit about this episode. Mm-hmm. I don't actively dislike it. I certainly don't actively like it. Yeah, uh, I nothing this episode. Absolutely. There are things that feel in character. There are moments that kind of feel like cool, like, school storyline. But I don't know. It doesn't really go anywhere. And it's not funny. So with that being said, let's dive on in, buddy. Let's do it. Okay, so I think one thing I will start off by saying, I'm pretty sure this episode was supposed to be the second in the season. I think it's production code two. And that does make sense because I had this thought going into this one. Wow, it's already episode four of only a 13 episode season. And we haven't met like the main professor of the season Mm -hmm. or gotten into that class. And normally that's what is in the first or second episode. Yeah, this feels like it should very much have been the second episode of the season, but I think maybe it has something to do with not having a lot of faith in this as a second episode, maybe thinking Mm -hmm. that the Haunted House one would be more of a draw, and that's probably true, but this feels really late. This maybe should have been last week and then Space Time this week. Okay, so the beginning of this episode feels like community. They're all like standing around outside the history of Ice cream class lamenting that they don't get to take it and and preparing for their history class that they're about to start troy has this line up here about game of thrones but then by the end of the line i don't get what they're trying to say anymore yeah (laughs) where he's like if i wanted to learn about history, oh no zach listen you got to understand pop culture pal what they're saying is he it's not a good joke at all no not that part He's like, if I wanted to learn about history, I'd learn about Game of Thrones. And Annie says, this class is about the real world. It's yeah, not the show, the real world, which he gets excited about. Oh, it's, like, it's about the show, the show. Yeah, the real understand world. pop culture. Not the show. See, when Abed said not the show, I was still thinking about Game of Game Thrones. Game of Thrones, right? So uh, yeah. the joke didn't make any sense to me. That does no, make sense good. to me. Maybe it's the way Annie said the real world or the way that... I don't know. Interesting. Mm-hmm. If it were an animated show, you could, like, like Spongebob, they would have drawn a thought bubble next to Troy's head, and that would have let you know that it was about the real world, the show. Uh, so they're all kind of complaining about what they have to do this semester. Shirley says hard buns instead of hard as. <laughs> yeah. That was a little funny, I guess. And Jeff has a line when he says, quick impression, wah, who am I, you guys? That was kind of funny. But I thought that was kind of funny. What's not funny is then Chevy is like, and I'm here too, guys, remember? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, no, and keeps walking. Every time they do these tracking shots, Chevy is always <laughs> last. Uh, he isn't, like, usually these scenes, this shot would begin with them all in movement as if they mm-hmm. are walking around the hallway. <laughs> he, like, you watch him start to walk. And he, every time there's a shot like this, he has a sour look on his face. Because <laughs> they're making like, him move. Yeah, he looks like he didn't wipe well enough, and now he's got an itchy <laughs> butt or something, which I've been there. And then, okay, so they walk into the history class, uh, but that's not enough for this episode. The big draw of this episode is that it's the return of the season three German students, kind of. Kind of. And that was a good episode. Honestly, that was a highlight. The foosball kind of had some stuff in common with the physical education episode. Yeah, I enjoyed that That's where we got the Shirley and Jeff having interacted as children realization, the anime sequence. Uh, That's also the the Abed's Dark Knight DVD goes missing and Annie does a Christian Bale impression, stuff like that. That's a decent episode. I see why they would want to follow back up on that this season as new showrunners if they were like well that kind of worked maybe we could try to do more with that Mm -hmm. do you think and maybe this is clear was nick kroll supposed to be in this episode did they write this for nick kroll and then he couldn't do it so they changed a couple lines here in the beginning and had a different like figurehead of the germans maybe i think that if they could have had him they would have sure right i don't think they would not ask nick kroll i'm sure they'd be like oh let's have his brother they had just already uh at that point written the episode or committed to the plot so they just brought in not james vanderbeek to do it yeah okay so what do you think of reinhold what do you think of the germans in this episode meh yeah I didn't think I was going to like them in the first episode they were in because I was thinking about this one. And then I thought it was funny in the first one. A lot of Nick Kroll's German impression uh, uh, pronunciations of things were really funny. I always think of the, this is very much beginning to be on much as Donkey Kong or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
this episode it feels more mean spirited than that episode was towards yeah, German people. I think so too. And not in a funny way or in like a super aggressive way, just in a way that stands out and kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. It's like how many jokes can we make about Germany in this span? And it's like they didn't turn any of them down, so they just kept doing them. There's this really weird scene where the head, the new head of the Germans, uh, comes up to Jeff after they're kind of commenting and complaining about them being there and not having left. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have this weird, like, stand down between each other as if Jeff is, like, I don't know, almost like kind of like a legend to these these Germans of he, like, he like got the upper hand on them and they desperately need revenge. Yeah. And for that being kind of the hook of this episode is that Jeff schooled them last time and they want revenge even here in a second with the history professor when he talks about like the writing about history from the vanquished side of mm -hmm. of, of of view it's kind of an interesting concept if if this was more about like the germans trying to get their one up on the study group like lock in step with everyone kind of hating the study group to begin with. There's yeah. a hint of an idea here, but then everything that they do is nothing. It's nothing. They don't, like, they never even... <sighs> yeah, they don't... There's never don't even, like, a real, like, someone foiling someone else, and when there is, yeah. it's the ruse that doesn't really do doesn't anything, but give them an excuse to build an Oktoberfest. It's not, like, a clever little plan. But their standoff is interrupted by Professor Cornwall, as played by Malcolm McDowell, who, of course, a lot of people will know as being the lead of a little film called A Clockwork F***ing Orange. <laughs> Why is Malcolm McDowell on this show? You know, they couldn't get Anthony Hopkins. No, they couldn't. And Anthony Hopkins just won an Oscar or something last year, so. No, did he win for that movie where he I was don't remember, like... but I really wanted to see it. Yeah. The movie looked really good. But Malcolm McDowell shows up as Professor Cornwallis. He's this British kind of uppity uh, uh, history professor who has kind of this... I've been watching a lot of AP Bio lately. And the mm -hmm. whole thing on AP Bio is that the main character, Jack, used to teach at Harvard. So this new school that he's at, he, mm -hmm. or, uh, maybe not Harvard. I, don't know, I think Harvard. It was uh, Harvard, that, I thought. That this new class that he has to teach means so very little to him, and he's undermining it at every uh, at every point he gets. And that, I kind of get that a little bit from Professor Cornwallis. Yeah, sure. It looks like he had to leave his old, sturdy job because of some uh, sexual misdoings that, that, that went on, and now he's stuck working a job like this. What do you think of his character's first impression? I think he does a great job selling it. I The character doesn't really do a whole lot for me in either direction mm -mm, there's not a lot to it yeah like he's he, okay like maybe there's some stuff there where he can like any tightening Jeff in the her future. sweater is a little funny uh, him yeah. being kind of potentially a little bit of a creep mm -hmm. but you know, coming from like feeling like he's too good for this place you know kind of like a, a jeff so maybe there's some potential there in the future to do some things with they don't but maybe they could what doesn't work here is like, Professor Kane kind of had some of that energy, too, that he's too good for where he's at. Uh, the th problem with Professor Cornwallis is that absolutely nothing he says is, is a joke or yeah. is funny. And so he kind of sets up this whole Victor Vanquish thing. He could have been this, like, boy meets world teacher-esque mm -hmm. character who, like... At the beginning of the episode, uh, imparts a wisdom that then carries over into the, to the plot lines of the episode, right? But yeah. that wouldn't really work for Community, and this character isn't really funny, so every time he's around, everything just kind of stops. Yeah, totally. And it makes me think of later on we get the Christmas episode where he's heavily featured, and it kind of feels that way in that one, too. Mm -hmm. I also can't quite tell what it is, but something about the history classroom set feels off to me. Like really um, it's small, the fact that there's like really a cheap or there's like what? a desk and table. It's not like a school desk, like to the left of all the desks. It's really? not really in the shot at all. Like it's clearly a room that wasn't supposed to be a classroom, but it had yeah. to be a different classroom than they used. And so I think it's it's too wide is why it looks weird. So this we've been talking a lot lately about how the jokes that lead into the theme song haven't exactly earned the their place. This was one of the worst. The professor opens up this whole 
how history is written by the victors and how history would look different if it was written by the people who are vanquished, which piques interest in, what the f*** is his name, Reinhold, uh, who wants to get a comeuppance against Jeff in the study group, and he has this evil cackle, uh, something like, and it, it wouldn't have been good, but I wish they would have been like, cut right a theme song but yeah. instead there's that bit about oh i was thinking about the the german version of the nanny franline was and then he is, doesn't say anything and is the joke that her name is franline or i think that's what's supposed to be the joke mm. i don't know it it, it, it doesn't translate so i can't quite tell what the joke's supposed to be yikes yeah, and that's where we get the theme song. Like three minutes into this thing, uh, not off to a good start. No. I, you know what's going to be not the best episode when even the theme song comes on and you're like, let's just get this over with. Yeah. Let's just get through <laughs> it. Um, okay, so here's something I'm going to say. Maybe this is a problematic uh, thing, but in this episode, and maybe it's because of all the other stuff that happens in the episode, the Changnesia plot is probably what bothers me the least. I, I'm not a fan of Changnesia. I don't like it either. Ever. I don't like it either. And it gets stupid when it's at the end and more and more people are, it gets stupider the more the people around him are like buying into it. Yeah. But in this episode, when it's just the Dean, I don't mind it that much. Hmm. I buy that the Dean might play into whatever he's doing. There's no sense. It's in a future episode, but there's no sense of what's really going on yet of him, like, yeah. being lying about this. Instead, we just kind of get this episode subplot where Chang has this, like, baby face and the Dean is just kind of in charge of babysitting him and figuring out why he's here and what he has to do with them. I don't know, man. I'm just grasping for straws. I didn't love it, but I do like the Dean in this subplot. I think the Dean does enough things that make me laugh to make me be slightly more invested in this than now, in the here's, Germans. Here's what I will say. There were two things in this episode that I did not enjoy the Dean did. Really? Okay, we'll point them out as we get to them. I will. One's coming Well, first soon. is the nurse. Right? One of them's the nurse yeah. thing, right? I don't like that. Uh, I have three, sorry. Was that the third? Are the That's other two the something else? I don't like the nurse thing. Else. I even liked the vibe of this doctor in the beginning who's kind yeah. of like forcing Chang onto him. And I like the inquisitive face that Chang makes. You can tell that uh, you can tell that Ken is playing the character differently, that he's yeah. really like trying to pull this off. They're all trying to pull it off. And I think that they do a better job of pulling it off than the other side of the episode. I agree. Even if even way more so than the first Chang Dynasty, we know what's coming and how long we have to deal with it, and yeah. uh, it's it makes it really hard to find anything out of this. I like it's how they true. have Ken's hair in this episode. Mm-hmm. He looks nice. It's a little different. He looks like younger to me. A little. Yeah, bit. he does. So yeah, the dean is being uh, handed over to Chang, Ke who's going by the name of Kevin, claiming to have Changnesia. He doesn't remember anything that happened. And a doctor who is trying to study what will happen to someone who has lost their memory if they're put back into the scenario that was traumatic, right? He's trying to figure out what would happen, and the dean is kind of corralled into having no choice but to really go along with it. That's it. Basically, this episode needs to find a way to make it okay that Chang, this character that blew up the school or tried to <laughs> blow up the school and took it over... Uh, they have to find a way for it to be okay that he's still here, that he's he's still one of the main characters of the show. They've got to find a way to pepper him in. So my question to you is what... Obviously, this isn't the right thing to have done, this storyline, mm -hmm. to get Chang back in here, but what else could they have done to make it okay that Chang is in the halls of this school to be able to just brush it off? Would it be better if they had simply just done a, like... Whoa, you're a science teacher now? Didn't you just try to kill all of us like three months ago? I would have been okay with them. Like, Chang could have been like the janitor, maybe. Or Chang could have like started working or like going to City uh -huh. College or something and actually sure. make it like that he's still against them. Or I don't know. I. You know what I mean? Because I don't have want Chang to leave the show. With making Chang such a bad guy. Right. And go but so they did. drastic. And it's yeah. not season four's fault that they have to figure something no. out to do with this character to keep Ken around. I see why this is what they went with, even if it's just 
a, a drag throughout the rest of the mm-hmm. season. We're a couple episodes away from the third documentary episode, which is like about them trying to get to the bottom of Changnesia, and mm-hmm. it's not exactly one that I look forward to. Uh, I don't like the Dean line here when uh, the doctor says, oh, he's saying Chang that's in the sentences first all the time. That's a, that's a crazy people thing, and the Dean's like, oh, he's always Dean that. I can just see, like, kind of the pain on Jim Rash's face yeah. as he has to say it. Yeah, that was the first thing that rubbed me the wrong way. And I do like, at the very least, that this episode, the immediate reaction for the Dean is, there's no way I'm letting this guy back in here. That they're not just like, yeah, okay, that's yeah. fine. I mean, that is what they do in a second, but it's nice that they thought, well, everyone's going to be like, why would they let the Dean let Chang anywhere near the school? Uh, it's because the school board already made the decision, and it's above the dean's. I did not like the Abed making. yell. Yeah, he makes like the Abed yell, the high pitch. Ah! And what is kind of funny though is that where they are, the study group, Abed like feels that someone else is going through that. I do think that that's kind of funny. And then the way that it never ties back into the dean, it ends up being that they see the Germans, so Abed thinks that's what was going on. Mm-hmm. I think it, there's kind of a funny bit in there, but the Dean doing the Abed thing is weird. And uh, Britt is saying, did you eat dairy? Is that the disturbance? He's yeah. like, oh, I don't know, but I'll take a lactate just in case. <laughs> yeah. But then they see that it's the Germans in the study room, and this, he doesn't need to take a lactate. Look, the rest of the episode, as far as the Germans are concerned for now, is the two parties versus each other for the study room. And honestly, there's some interesting stuff as far as we've never done anything about... Well, anyone can book this study room. Yeah. And the study group can be kicked out of it. They're not special. They're not. Well, but haven't they done like an in tag or something when they all show up and somebody else is using it and they're like, oh, I guess we'll go somewhere else? There's the episode when Troy and Abed are talking about like giant ears versus something else. And there's a bunch of like older Asian women sitting at the table. Yeah. And they make them vote on what they're talking about. Yeah. I don't know, but it's just not something they've done an episode about where the study group has turned down their space because, of course, they will be sometimes. That's what happens in college. I don't hate that idea. It's just that this is such a big sequence of the episode, and they don't do anything that funny, and then they try to tack on a couple of, like, really, really light, like, war movie homage, or I don't know. They just try to make it something that it isn't because it's nothing. I don't hate Jeff's line about you give the Germans something small like uh, a a study room or Austria. They're going to want something (laughs) big like Earth. That's kind of funny. But it wasn't the Germans' fault that Hitler did that, right? Depends on who you ask. Pierce's line about being in war and having not really been in war but having moved to Canada is a joke that would have been funny if Chevy had said it a little differently. Oh, my God. His delivery was so bad. And it's still almost time. funny, but those people call him bacon. I don't know. The way that, that he delivered rough. it was a little off, and it was kind of a funny joke. So that sucks. Mm-hmm. Because he could have just, like, said it how he was. He didn't have to, like, growl it. <laughs> also, Annie says that they're going to tell the Germans it's okay to share the room, and then she turns around, and they're all, like, right there, right in <laughs> the face. That's kind of funny. What I'll say about this episode is, as far as the Germans go, I kind of like the other two guys. Yeah. They're both kind of funny. I don't like the main guy at all, and I don't know if it's just because Nick Kroll isn't there or what. I just don't Mm -hmm. like him at all for some reason. I do like the storyline with with Abed and Carl where they they, Abed find he kind of realizes based on something Carl says that they play an online game together. Spawncraft. Yeah, it's cool that they have this bond, and then throughout the rest of the episode, they could have done more with this. This could have been a funnier if there had been like a Romeo and Juliet type C plot kind of going on. Yeah, uh, where would they dabble in it a little bit? But this is one of the dynamics in the episode that is actually kind of interesting, mm-hmm. and I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of. Yeah, and I want to see more Abed. Mm-hmm. I feel like when Abed's is... in this episode, I think he's the strongest one. Or the one I like the most. But he's just I'm not glad very that much. At, at the very least so far this season, they haven't had Abed say many things that I think Abed wouldn't say that. Mm-hmm. Which is good because Abed is such a specific character to write for. Here's a Dean line that I do really like. It cuts right to him. Funny too. Let me get this as straight as I can get things. <laughs> you <laughs> authorize this? 
that they've been doing a lot of like we've talked a little bit about how I'm not crazy about the types of gay jokes they're telling about the mm-hmm. dean this season, but that's one that does work for me. Yeah. The school board guys show up just for a second, which is weird, but it's always nice to see them. And I yeah. like that all they needed, they're like, they gave us money. <laughs> is this one of the things, the dean stumbling over saying Changnesia and putting his name into it and all that? I didn't even register that. I so this is number a... four? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not crazy about this one. The school board guys do challenge the dean to prove that Kevin is faking it, which he agrees to do, but he's more focused on what he's going to wear for the occasion. And that's all we get with that right now. Meanwhile, the study group walks into the study room, walking towards it. It looks empty. They think that they're going to get their table back, that them being nice worked everything out, that that that's as far as it needs to go. But, of course, uh, we're seven minutes into the episode, and they've got to make a conflict out of something. So the study table has ha- it has been taken over. The, the Germans are, are using it now because they booked it, like, fair and square. <laughs> like, study group loses. Easy. Yeah. Carl and Abed being friends is cute, though. The way that they're like, hi, Carl. Hi, Abed. They smile at each other. One thing that they do as the rest of the series goes on, Abed's pretty good at making friends. Yeah. Like, I think of back to when he made friends, kind of flirt friends with, like, the FBI agent. Yeah. Or um, later on, Abed's girlfriend, played by Brie Larson is yeah. actually a pretty cute season four thing. Or even in the future future, there's an episode where he kind of becomes unlikely friends with Jonathan Banks's character, Professor Hickey. Uh, mm. Abed is good at making friends with random people, and it's always really cute to see. Yeah. This was cheesy as shit. They're talking about this squabble over the study room, and all of a sudden a police officer or security guys just there's like is there a problem here just because they need someone there why couldn't the well he briefly was like security but he like said it like once quietly these dorks won't leave our study room troy is nice troy is funny is he though is he though the lines aren't that funny but his delivery at least makes you do a soft chuckle exhale yeah it's just because donald's donald Mm mm-hmm I even thought a couple of the performers that are usually on point felt a little more off this week. I thought that Annie had a couple of off-line deliveries throughout the episode. And Allison, this season, has been pretty on fire with what she's given. I agree. Um, I'm wondering if this episode was an episode where the cast was kind of becoming a little disillusioned with the scripts they're being handed. Yeah, I could see that. There's this, like really slight runner of Shirley like wanting to go home and see her family which kind of becomes all there is to Shirley's character the rest of the series well and they find like they it pays off in the end with Shirley's like you guys want to go get a drink and Britta's like we have lives and it was not worth any I was gonna say is that a payoff (laughs) yeah like it sucks because Shirley was such a big part of the last Foosball episode, and it was part of the reason why it was so good. Yeah. And then this one, she has like it's three like times that Jeff is the kids. only one that their verses when Shirley was a part of it too. Mm-hmm. It, this would have been an easy way to write in a Shirley thread, and they just didn't. Yeah. And it's different writers. You would think maybe new people, new eyes would come to community and be like, "We've got to give Shirley more to do," and they didn't. You would think. So they start a war with the Germans and over the study table, and this begins this probably the, montage. the least essential sequence of the least essential episode of Community, where there's kind of a war homage movie thing going on, but not really. There's just like text that says war for the study room, day yeah, one. Yeah, it doesn't make it a war movie thing. And then we get like the same scene like three times instead of like something different happening each time. Mm-hmm. It's like they get there early, not early enough. They go to a shitty room. They get there early again, not early enough. They go to a shitty room. And different things happen every time, but it just feels really repetitive. Yeah. Uh, they really should have mixed it up. I mean, I get that the joke is that no matter how early they go, they go right before them. But it's just not... I do like this. I like the set of the weird off-study room because I do feel like a lot of colleges have these study rooms that are the bad ones that you kind of get stuck in. And I like how the light flashes and I like how there's a gate that locks it and stuff like that. I think this is a cool set piece. Oh, but this was awful when Pierce tries to fix the broken light and the, the CGI graphics they put over him being electrocuted 
it's the probably most cartoony thing the show's ever done. Yeah, it's bad. Pierce, uh, Chevy's acting is Good. just terrible. And the worst thing is that it's not funny. There's nothing funny about it. It's not funny. And then he sits down and they're like, I smell a barbecue. And that's it. We got to get up early tomorrow. I even noticed the second day when they do the, like, dramatic walk that they did in the beginning Mm -hmm. of the first day one, which, what's the point of that? Is that supposed to be an homage to something? What's that an homage to? That they do a close-up of Chevy, and I can, and look at his face. (laughs) He's, like, barely trying, but you can tell that they were, like, okay, Chevy, act like you just got electrocuted this time. And he said, what? And they said, just make your eyes bigger. And he did this. And they got yeah. two, like 0. 0.2 seconds of it. So they I think this it. is some of Chevy's worst acting in the show, in this episode. It was like really noticeably bad. Yep. Then on the second day, they get stuck in the shitty study room again. This time the air starts blowing and it makes them all smell something awful. Um, I don't know. That's not really a joke. Uh, day three. The crazy early is also not funny. They get there even earlier. They're so sleepy. Uh, and you can tell that they shot all of these, like, the walk up to the room, walk up to the room, walk up to mm-hmm. the room, like, in a row. You know? And they're like, now this yeah. time, yawn. Troy, put your hood up. That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and they're too late. Again. Why didn't they try to do it the day before? Is that the rule? <sighs> Now they're in a different weird study room. But I think they're in a one, different one each time. Are they in a different one each time? Yeah. I didn't notice as much of the second one. This one, they're sitting in all the chairs, and the chairs literally, like, dissolve one I at a time, and they all fall to the ground. It is funny. It's like Especially the only, when Abed falls. It's like the only fun the way he, like, puts his head back, and it turns to slow motion when he <laughs> gets into it. This is, like, the only kind of funny bit of the episode. Yep. That was it, those three seconds. And even it, like, goes on a little too long. Did we really need to watch every person do it one at a time? They could have, like, all fallen, and it could have been, like, slow motion and dramatic as they all fall. Mm Mm-hmm. I also thought it was interesting that the dean walks into his office to find Chang just shaving, like, specifically just his chin. Yeah. This is the scene where the dean kind of reveals to uh, uh, Chang that he did all these awful things, and he's trying to, to... Prove that Chang is lying and that he really is Chang. Uh, but instead, Kevin reacts in a way that he's like, wow, I did all those things. I'm a bad guy. I must go to jail. And then he does. And that's this part. <laughs> <laughs> Chang runs off to, to take himself to jail. Back in history class, uh, what's going on here? The study group's all really tired and they haven't really been studying, so they're not ready for what's going on in history class. They'll have to describe a battle from the perspective of both the winners and the losers. That sounds like an awful test to have to take. Yeah, no thanks. The Germans taunt the study group again. Nothing funny or memorable God is damn, the F for victory joke was not even a little bit The humor. cradle mine nobbins or whatever he says. And then says. do you hear when he walked out of the room, he's like, English is my, English second, my second language. language. Like, what the f***? Boo. That gets a boo from me. And then... Also, what the f***, Jeff? Yeah. Jeff's <laughs> speech all throughout the rest of this episode. This one and the one at the end. They do not work for me. It's like, I didn't have a dad, so He's I need like, this So I watched room. a show in the 60s, and that show is about Nazis. And uh, The only bit of writing that I liked in this episode was... Uh, uh, that the show came from a time before there was anything such as too soon. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of a funny line. That's Is that really it. what Hogan's Heroes is about? Yeah, and I had no idea. Yikes. I think maybe the Hogan's Heroes are like the not Nazis. Like people that are in the camp? It's I don't know. I don't I don't know. But it's set in World War II for sure. Yikes. I didn't really ever watch it. And even Abed standing up for the ruse. When he's like, oh, you had me a ruse. That's what I said. Well, then good thing you said it. Like, I don't... Community yeah. never did stuff like that that didn't have a point behind it that wasn't like a specific wink at the camera. All of these are like, what are they saying? <sighs> now we're in Oktoberfest. This is the ruse that they've concocted to get rid of these Germans, these pesky Germans. What do you think of uh, Oktoberfest? I think they did a pretty cute job of putting it together. In, sure. The, you know. the set department always comes through. Yeah. I also think it was a bit of an excuse just to put 
uh, Allison Annie and Brie Britta and, in some yeah. revealing whatever you would call that. Beer maid. Yeah. I think is the respectful term. All of the like things that they put together that the Germans won't be able to help themselves but to grab mm-hmm. really, really cheap stuff. Does not look good. I do like the one, nearly 100 luft balloons <laughs> for a lot of reasons because they probably can't say 99 luft balloons without having mm-hmm. to pay. That's great. And then throughout the rest of this boring thing that's happening in the in the foreground, if you look in the background, you can see the dude like just shoving his face all up in the balloons, which is pretty Fantastic. funny. Fantastic. And they're talking about the <laughs> uh, they're the Hogan's Heroes references. There are far too many for when this episode of this show came out. Mm-hmm. You think that these young guys are going to be referencing Hogan's Heroes this much? No. Especially the Germans. Even though they like later call it Hogan's uh, hero, Hogan's villains or whatever, uh, and the whole cake thing is just out of a stupider show that yeah. someone's hiding in a cake and don't cut the cake because our buddy's in there. It's just from a stupid. Well, he it's does from it like how four times. He's like, I could cut the cake, and he's like, no, and he's like, or I could cut the cake, and he's like, no, don't you do it, and he's like, well, I could just stab the cake, and he's like, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> That is exactly. We don't, I don't even have to describe it now. That was the whole scene. <laughs> Shirley's like, "Oh, no problem. I made this cake all night. I just had to use the eggs I would use to make my children breakfast." And I'm thinking, "What does she need? Two hundred eggs to make her children <laughs> breakfast?" Then Troy pops out of it in a gas mask, and he makes a comment about they were gonna tear gas them. <laughs> And wait, wait, and what ends up happening is that they do win because the Germans get in trouble for celebrating their own heritage on Greendale, which is an almost funny community idea. But they were just going to straight up gas mask them. Why? (laughs) Why? What was that going to (laughs) do? That's like actually assault. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's a crime. Yeah. I mean, they've, like, roofied people before. It's true. (laughs) But, yeah, he was going to gas mask them and probably everybody else in the room. Not gas mask. Tear gas gas. them and everybody else in the room. (laughs) Put these masks on your f***ing face. Put them on now. Uh, So, yeah, the Germans think that they've won, but there is another thing going on. Pierce handing them the beers. He's like, beer me, bitte. And Pierce is, like, shaking. I don't know. (laughs) Chevy is really bad in this episode. Yeah. It, it's just Not really his bad. Best day. Not his best work. And we started this by saying, yeah, you know, Pierce is almost all right in this one. And the thing is, he almost is, but it's mm. still very but bad. He's not, yeah. So the Germans are all in uh, compromising positions, whether with the balloons or the bloodwurst or the beer. They're busted. So why the gas? Why the tear gas? Ugh. Okay, now we're in the dean's office, and yes, the Germans are in trouble for celebrating their own heritage on Greendale campus, which is a big (laughs) no-no. It's been a little while since we've gotten the dean's overly PC-ness, and I kind of like that. I like that that's still a running thread of his. And how his anti-racism really resembles actual racism most times. It's always good to see a bit of that. It's a good enough solution to this storyline. It gets them the study room back because they lose some of their privileges. (laughs) Oh, most of these are water-based. Most of the things that they lose. But uh, this is such an inessential episode of Community. We're getting very close to the end of this episode, and we're an hour into this podcast. Man, Stephen, so... What do you think makes the worst episode of Community the worst episode of Community? Because I certainly get the least out of this episode. Yeah. This, ep- this episode makes me feel nothing. Is that worse than making me feel bad? That's at what least you have the to bad decide. is making me, for me feel Zach, something. This is towards the bottom of my list. Sure. It's not exactly at the bottom, but it's bottom five so far for look me. right now my bottom is still soundly history 101 mm. but if i had to pick between watching one of those two sure i would probably f-ing go with the hunger deans i guess i would too but i don't know if this is a worse episode it just is such a nothing episode it's so repetitive it's so unfunny 
Oh my the God, look stereotypes at are bad. Yes, we get, like I said, we get another walking <laughs> shot of all of them, and everyone's like smiling because they've won. And Pierce looks like his mom wouldn't buy him a candy. At uh, the he looks Walmart. like he's going to murder somebody. <laughs> he looks like a he looks like a pissed off little kid. Yeah. He has no idea what they're doing. And then the the writers were like, well, we finished the episode. What's the end tag? It's what? Oh, it's 15 minutes long? Oh, shit. So now we get, like, another third act? Yeah. And the study group come to find that because of what they did to get rid of the Germans, they are seen as the villain in the scenario and look, I get where they're trying to go with this. It's nice to see a lot of the background characters for the first time this season. Mm-hmm. But the Todd episode about the study group being awful, this is certainly not that. No. I think this is the first time we've seen the human being in quite some time. Yeah. What do you think of this? What do you think about this out-of-turn <laughs> change? I get it because they are kind of like... The worst. Yeah. I think Garrett's funny... It's good to see all of them, It's for nice sure. to see everybody. And if anything, I do kind of like in a second when we get the clip show of the the side characters being oh, on the, the outskirts. Oh, that's the flashback. That's the golden um, flashback. That Okay, I get it now. That is, I, I don't know if golden is correct, but it is near golden. That's a bit that I remembered being from a previous season or a later season or something. Yeah. I didn't have that as season four, and it is funny. What isn't great, though, is, again, okay, so the study group doesn't learn anything from this because they never do. And it's okay if that's the joke, but I don't think that's the joke. I just don't think they had anything for the study group to learn. It just feels very dashed together for no reason. Yeah, I think this scene goes on for too long, too. It's like... Wait, you guys are siding with the Germans? So like, we're that's what the they Germans. just did. So I hate it when it shows the Germans. And now you. <laughs> That's kind of a fault of TV in the pre-streaming age because we've just sat through a commercial. So you kind of have to restate the last thing that happened. But Zach, you're saying that the Germans aren't the Germans, (laughs) that we're the Germans? But you know that the Germans are German, right? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you're right. You're right. (laughs) And why is like the leader of the like the Germans just standing there with his arms crossed and a bad fake like, hand like yep. nodding his head, and the other two like are just like scattered about the room? Like I thought they were like a unit. So we get the flashbacks. We see an alternate angle of cooperative calligraphy where Garrett's trying to go into the room. Ah, oh, and I haven't plugged it enough on here. I had the most wonderful conversation with Eric Charles Nielsen on Six Seasons in a Podcast with Alex. Eric is a really cool guy. I had no idea what to expect out of someone who is so in character all the time. Yeah. He was really cool, really real and down to earth and gave a lot of cool sp- perspective about what it's like to be this kind of actor on a show like that, mm-hmm. uh, what his life was like then, what it's like now. Uh, I, If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Maybe I'll ask Alex if I can put it on our podcast feed for like an extra. Yeah, that'd be great. Because it was a lot of fun and I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So check that out if you haven't checked it out yet. He's funny in this scene. He's like, I signed this room out. I'm supposed <laughs> to study for a final tomorrow. And Todd, there, ha- <laughs> there, someone lost a pen. Yeah, I thought that was probably the funniest of all of them, but that made me laugh. Also, just the face that Leonard makes all the time. He doesn't even say anything. <laughs> Jeff's like, come back later. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and Leonard just makes that face. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff rocks the makeup in the... Mm-hmm. Here's what I will say, though. The sure, this is a pretty good flashback sequence. But Community Seasons 1 through 3 would have built three new sets just for the three flashbacks. Totally. Instead, we get what I can tell was very quickly shot. Mm-hmm. A couple things are funny when the study group keeps getting compared to Nazis. First, when Annie's like, I'm Jewish. And yeah. that, uh, <laughs> that Shirley's shirt that she's wearing has a badge that says SS Good on God. the side of it. That's a pretty funny bit to get mm-hmm. out of Shirley's sandwiches. And then, yeah, we cut. I, I don't know. Maybe I do have to take back that the Dean and, and Chang thing is my favorite of the episode. The Dean just has a, a couple of funny lines. And this is one of the worst ones. Kevin's turned himself into jail. And the Dean has had an off-screen change of heart for some reason. Well, it's when the Dean got the call and said, he did what? So he's shocked that Kevin would So he must in. be real if he did that. 
Yeah. So he comes in and he takes the dean takes off a trench coat to reveal like a sexy nurse outfit. He says we are going to nurse you back to health, and it's the worst dean costume that we've ever it's had, bad. or at least the worst joke and reason and reveal behind it. It's mm-hmm. bad. It's, it's yeah, bad. I really didn't like this one, and I like almost every single costume the dean has ever worn. And this one was a thumbs it's down. It's like for this me. one and the Hunger Deans. They're pretty. Yeah. They're, they're pretty down there. So the Dean's had a change of heart, realizes that, that Kevin can't be faking this. He believes Kevin and is going to take him back to Greendale to help nurse him back to health. Uh, and he's interested in what curing Chang Nisha might do for the school. Uh, so that's resolved. And here in a moment, we'll get the big reveal at the end that the study group meets Chang again. I do like that as Chang's leaving the cell, he like steps on the Dean's jacket yeah. and the Dean's like, oh, I wish he hadn't stepped on that. <laughs> I thought that mm-hmm. was kind of funny. This line was stupid from Jeff. He's like, I feel guilty for eating this cake, but not for the usual reasons. They're celebrating their victory, but they feel bad because they realize that they're in the, in the wrong. But when their history professor comes up to yell at them for not taking their test, they write it off as, oh, this must all be a conspiracy against us. We're really the good guys, which a lot of people do do. Yep. Abed at least feels genuinely bad because Carl has been nice to him and he lied right to his face when he could have been a real friend to him. The just following orders line was a little bit on the nose. I do kind of like the Annie Abed thing when Abed's like my four prong trident and yeah. Annie says, Why don't you call it a quadrident? And and Abed just goes shh and puts his finger <laughs> over her mouth. That was a cute moment. But yeah, the professor comes up uh, and they imagine that he must have orchestrated all of this to teach them that everyone can be a hero or a villain. And the professor's just like, what? No, you think I would do that just for you guys? And the yeah. study group's like, yep, that's Greendale. That's a Wednesday. <sighs> yeah. What do you think of this? I don't like that it seems like his, like the professor's takeaway from it was, wow, this this school is such a mess because teachers do that. Not these people are so self-centered that they think that I would do that. Yeah, about them. You know, that was Absolutely. my only real issue with the takeaway here. Otherwise, yeah. it's I nothing it. <laughs> but they all messed. They all missed their test. They all failed, which good. The study group. I don't think we've had a situation like this where they've really failed. Now, nothing comes of it. But usually they work their way out of something like that. Yeah, this time they, they all up. They all failed their test. I want to call a nerdy continuity error out, though. Get him. Uh, one of the big storylines in the second half of this season is that Annie and Shirley are kind of competing mm-hmm. for valedictorian, which would never be a thing at community college. Yeah. But they both failed this test. How could they be valedictorian? Yeah, because in college, a test, like, if you fail one... The tests are everything. Is, yeah. It would at least, I imagine, affect your grade enough to bring it down below someone else, i.e. Annie Kim or something. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Cornwallis goes off and is like, I've made the worst. I've made a huge mistake as he walks off. Uh, he hates his job. Pierce, his lines here about, oh, so Jeff's the Hitler. I guess it's just decided then. I don't get to be Hitler. Ooh. Uh, Bad. Yeah. No vote or anything. And then all of a sudden, the stupidest, like, sweet sitcom ending. I've said before, something that season four gets right is that it has more heart. And it has heartfelt endings <laughs> like this one's about to have. There are ones in the future that work quite well. This one is not one of them. This one is not. All of a sudden, Jeff's like, what if we love Greendale? And Greendale's our home. So let's fix our home. And then they, like, paint a wall and do also, one or, and they fix one light bulb and not then them everyone likes them again. Reparations. Chill the fuck out, Jeff. You're not <laughs> Let's help out the colored people for yeah. once. Uh not only on Jeff's part, that's why would they use that word on the writer's part? They mm-hmm. I don't know. It's not great. But yeah, they clear one raccoon one taxidermied raccoon out of a out of a vent. They paint one wall interspersed with Chang learning words like milk from the Dean. I thought that was a funny, at least, like, meme. Yeah. If that wasn't out of context of the Very Dean funny. holding up milk, Chang holding up picture of milk, <laughs> and the Dean 
clapping yeah. at him. That's a funny bit totally removed from the Changnesia thing. But no, all of a sudden this has turned into how the, the Greendale Seven are saints that really care about this school that earlier Jeff was saying stuff like, Greendale never gets better. And at the end, Jeff gets to say, what do you know? Greendale did just get slightly better thanks to the privileged and white people. <laughs> and I think that's the end of the episode. Oh, well, no, because we get the reveal. Now they're back well, and in. And also, they really just did it for themselves so that when they don't get to have their study room, then they have somewhere nice to go. It would have been way funnier if they did that. And then someone was there to point out, well, yeah, but you still did this and this and this. Yeah. Nobody wanted this wall to be this color, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, it would have been funnier if they... Because it seems so closed-minded the way that they think that they're helping. Yeah. Shirley wants to go celebrate at Skeepers. You know that classic recurring community bit, Skeepers. Hey, yo, loves Skeepers the Yard Mars at Skeepers. Everybody loves the Yard Mars at Skeepers. Uh, but Shirley just gets shut right down. They're like, we've got plans, Shirley. We've all got, we've all got stuff going on outside of this. The Dean shows up and I do like his reveal here, at least how he's like, man, you guys have so shown how much people can change. Everyone forgave you. Please remember that as you see what you're about to see. I yeah. think that's a funny bit. What I don't like is when Chang is brought into uh, the room, the super cartoony Scooby-Doo scream that they all do as he shows yeah. up. They could have just cut it away after he says like, hi, I'm Kevin. The scream yeah. was awful. He has Changnesia. The Dean is like, ugh, big deal. Oof. Uh, and that's the end of the episode. Uh, let's all just quickly let out one one single solitary cringe and yike for the episode we just discussed. Oof. Thank you. Now let's talk about the end credit, the end tag, which I like. I like the end tag. Thought it was cute. Troy and Abed have a podcast. We they do that. On, we do do that. It felt like a, a thing. And I like that at least they get some point of apology to Carl in this, even though they kind of slight his podcast at the end of it. It's mm -hmm. a cute little thing. Troy and Abed's podcast banter being podcast specific was funny. But yeah, I don't know. I liked it just as much as anything else in the episode, I, I guess. Yeah. I like, oh, all of the lines about Shirley's sandwiches are really funny. That yeah. it's the home of the, like, chicken skin wrap. Is it inside mm. or outside? You find out. Or the the three Triple times fried. fried Monte Cristo, we challenge you to find the bread. And yeah. then they give him a <laughs> gift certificate that's just a $5 bill. So that's kind of funny. Season four does do a good job of expanding Shirley's sandwiches into a thing that's, like, a part of the show. But yeah. then in season five, they're kind of like, nah, f*** that, f*** nope. Shirley's sandwiches. It's gone now. We they burned down everything except for Brie Larson that season four did for the most part. Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. They slight Carl. Uh, they're not returning the favor and going back on his podcast. And look, the first three episodes of the season, we had a lot to say. There was not a ton to say about this one. No. We're getting out in pretty damn near record time. Steven, now that we've gone through it, what do you think? What? How do you sum up this week's episode? I think the one that I enjoyed the least out of the whole season. I don't think it's so the far. worst. It's only episode four. Sure. Ooh. <laughs> we'll see as we go on. What I'll say is I think of all the handful of times that Community does like sequel episodes, this is the most pointless one. There was mm -hmm. no need to do a sequel to the German episode. There was no point, and the episode just doesn't justify its existence. It's literally just an episode to fill out the season order. It adds nothing to the season. It adds nothing to the series. It adds nothing to the characters. It adds nothing except maybe one or two little gifts to, like, the community fandom. It's mm -hmm. just a miss. It's not offensively bad. There were more things that I groaned at probably last week and in the first two episodes for sure, but this is just such a pointless episode beginning to end that it's hard to like anything about it, and it's hard for me to pick uh, an MVP. I thought I knew for sure at the beginning of this who my MVP was, and then you gave me so many reasons not to put it as that person, but I'm still going to do it because I don't want to give it to anyone. There's enough Dean stuff in this episode that I like, and there's not enough stuff from anybody else that I like, so I'm going to yeah. give it to the dean i guess steven who's yours <sighs> yeah i there were a few too many egregious dean things for me to I give get it, it to him i do get it uh audible mentioned to garrett garrett was good when he oh was my god it. sure um i liked carl that german guy but i guess i'm gonna give it to abed just because his storyline was the one that i liked the best i get that i vibe with that mm -hmm. but he doesn't do a lot and it's nope. it's 
it's a tough it's a tough thing isn't it yeah it's a tough episode next week though i am happy to say i remember next week's episode quite a bit more fondly Next week is the Thanksgiving episode. It's I'm the episode that. that that finally tackles this series long arc of Jeff's daddy issues, and yeah. it's one of the things that season four is known. If that episode might not be one of the standouts of the season, but they handled that issue about as well as you could expect out of season four. So I'm looking forward to revisiting that one next week. We are doing episode five, cooperative escapism in familial relations. Looking forward to it. If you want to be a part of our discussion, send us in your trivia, your episode MVP, and your favorite funny moment to can't disappoint podcast at gmail.com and if you want to go the extra mile if you like what we do here and want to see us take it further patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast is home to all kinds of exclusive content and it is that way to help drive us forward starting at just five bucks a month go hang out over there if you like what we do here and you want to get more of it uh steven where else can the people find us uh you can track us down uh with a uh, bloodhound or you can find us on twitter over at you can't disappod uh we like to tweet we like to to quote we like to be t- twitted with yes that's also where you can stay up to date with when we're you know gonna go live for the pre-show what episode we're doing if you ever forget you know it's a great place to stay up to date we're also over on instagram over at uh you can't you disappod. Mm, no that's twitter that's twitter Try <laughs> yeah uh, run, run over again, instagram again. is can't disappoint podcast it's the same as all the other ones is a different one. Yeah. Uh, and then we can uh, also find us on <laughs> Facebook and YouTube you under the names buddy. You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. The whole if name I had to grade that, it'd be an A+. Plus. Everyone, thank you for joining us. We love that you come here with us every week, even as we're trekking these muddy waters of Season 4. Can't wait to do it again next week for you guys. Hope you'll be back to join us. From inside the Dreamatorium, Black Lives Matter. For Stephen Baker, I'm Zach Pruitt. For Zach Pruitt, I'm Stephen Baker. And we love you. We'll see you next week. Take care. Stay safe. 99 Love Love Balloons. Women in the summer sky. There's something here from somewhere else. A war machine, it springs to life. Opens up one. has pushed this podcast and the community fandom so far over the last couple of years and they've been trucking along since when community was still airing so it's that it's really a twitter account that's a treasure trove of community facts and and blasts from the past and and a way to be updated on anything new happening and it's also our our dad yeah the man whose semen became the semen that you hear in your little ears as Before men. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks at communities for uh coming in that cup to make us. <laughs> now Zach, I I was right. very small at the time, so I don't remember exactly how the process yeah. went down. No, I remember um, every excruciating yeah, second. Yeah, you're you're about, you know, 6 months or so older than I am. <laughs> Did your cup just sit around for a while, or like, did, or did my cup sit around for a while? I guess. <laughs> I think that's a question. Before for he Dad. drank it, and let's then hope he wrote us in you. about it. Yeah. What? They talked. <laughs> did you well, say someone I have drank it and <laughs> grew us? <laughs> yeah. He drank it, or someone <laughs> drank yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I think we got to cut that. You I feel like, like there's one. an extra step in there somewhere. <laughs> no, no, no. Well. He came in a cup, and then he drank the cup, I guess. Jesus Christ. His tummy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that whole picture until just now. It's a lot. <laughs>